day to study the fool, or the fool study. We're up to the 135th fool in the Bible. This would be the 20th lesson we've done so far on fools. As we go to Isaiah chapter 19, verse 11. In 19, verse 11, the Bible says, Surely the princes of Zone are fools. The counsel of the wise, opposite of fool, the counsel of the, uh, the, counsel of the wise, counsel of the Pharaoh has become brutish. How say ye to Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient king? This one's pretty simple. Though in the office of leadership of a nation, there are fools. It's just because someone has an important position doesn't mean that they're wise. It, they could have bought the position. They could be in by race or by sex. In America today, you know, you got to hire a female. You got to hire someone of, of a origin of origin of race and color and equal rights. So. Just because you're in charge, just because you're a somebody, somebody doesn't mean you're wise. You can be a fool. So position doesn't always mark being wise or being foolish. For, uh, Psalms, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 1913. Isaiah 1913. Again, the princes of Zona become fools. The princes are not for deceived. They have also seduced Egypt. And like I said, just like uh, Isaiah 29, 11, they become fools. So you can be something and become lessened. You can be wise, you can be smart, and then you can become a fool. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is not guaranteed to you to have forever. Solomon got the wisdom and he got the uh, under, uh, knowledge from God, and yet he became a fool by worshiping other gods. So it's not a lifelong thing of wisdom. It can be brought down to be foolish. Isaiah 35, 8. Isaiah 35, 8. And an highway shall be there, and a way that is called the way of holiness. That sounds like a good road. The unclean shall not pass over it. Those who have not been washed, those who are not approved of God. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring man. The, though fools shall not err therein. So here is a path, here is a, a road for a man that will not be there is unclean. And it will not be traveled by fools. The way of holiness will not be allowed for no unclean person. Fools will not be there. Their right has been lost because of their foolishness. Isaiah 44, 25. I mean, Fools in general and not all are going to be cast out to the lake of fire that burns forever. Now, there are Christians that are fools. Isaiah 44, 25. That frustrateth the tokens of the liar and maketh diviners mad. That turneth the wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish. So here we again. We got somebody who's doing good and they fall into foolishness. Magi are men of magic and knowledge, but what they know will become foolish. A foolish knowledge. These psychics all that. One day all their powers, and there are powers, there are divinations of Satan. That's why it's so dangerous. And yet one day when Satan has been imprisoned and bound for a thousand years and then set loose and then God casts him off the lake of fire that burns forever. All the magicians, all the crystal ballers, all those people with divinations in the eternal life. Look, 
Who cares what they thought? Who cares what they had to say? Who cares about horoscopes in New Jerusalem? It'll be foolish information. It'll be unknown information. It'll be information uncaring in glory. Jeremiah 4.22. Jeremiah 4.22. My people, that would be God's people, be the Jewish people. My people is foolish. They have not known me. Here are God's people, the Jewish people. Here we can apply God's people to Christians. They have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet they have fallen from the good into the foolish. Because they know not God. There are plenty of Christians today who, who've gotten saved and they're going off in the world. They're going off their own self. They left the Bible. They left, you know, Christ and they're walking a foolish walk. Instead of doing better and climbing and getting better and better, they got worse. There is no graduating from a fool. You graduate a fool into wisdom. That's a sorry state. That's a very sorry state. Jeremiah 5, 4. Therefore I say, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they have not known the way of the Lord. Look at that. Those are people, and we can look at the realm of saved, and we can look at the realm of lost. For the lost people, they will not walk in a way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And they do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They do not put their faith where Jesus says, no man comes unto the Father but by me. And you try to go another road, a road of holiness that a fool cannot go that we've already read. You're a fool. Now for the Christian, he's saved. But then he decides... After this side of Calvary and the empty tomb, he's going to go another way. He's going to pervert himself. He's going to not live what he should according to the word of God. That's a fool. Because his end will be at the judgment seat of Christ, of fire, with ashes, wood, hay, or stubble, with no reward, no inheritance, and no crowns. And that's very foolish. So... Foolishness is not knowing God and who he really is. Foolishness to think God is as love, but not as holy. That God would entertain to allow you as a sinner into his heaven. That's foolish. Jeremiah 5.21 Jeremiah 5.21 Hear now this, O oh foolish people, and without understanding. So you have no understanding, which eyes and see have which have eyes and see not, you're blind, which have ears and hear not. I meet these people every Saturday. That I go and I street preach. I go down to the local farmer's market Saturday, you know, some days we're not there, but most of the time we are there, and I preach the gospel to those people. And I tell them, you are foolish, because if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not believed on the gospel. You're blind. You're deaf. You're in the realms of religion, and religion can't save you. And the only way you can come out of your foolishness is if you come in and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get wisdom. Get the understanding that Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ is the means for you to be saved. You don't want that. You don't believe in that. You won't listen. You're a fool. And you'll stay fool for all eternity in the lake of fire. Jeremiah 10, 8. Jeremiah 10, 8. But they are all together, excuse me, they are all together brutish and fools. The stark is their doctrine of vanity. Vanity is nothing. Idol worship and craftsmen. 
That's what the that's what the context is. Let me read this. Verse two. Thus saith the Lord, learn, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of the heathen, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, empty, nothing. One cutteth a tree out of the forest, okay, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe, okay, cut, cut, cut the tree. They deck it with silver and with gold. Sound familiar? Deck the halls with boughs of holly, silver and gold, tinsel, garland. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Tree stand. Make sure you order it. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be bored because it cannot grow. You got to carry that tree. Be not afraid of them, nor they cannot do evil, neither is also them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in the earth. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee does it uh, pertain. For as much as among all the wise men, a nation, and all their kingdom, there is none like unto thee. So wise men believe in God. Wise men believe God will be the head of all the nations. The wise men believe that God is God. But they are all become they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is doctrine of vanity. So it comes out in idol worship. That Christmas tree is an example. If you're saved or lost, you got that Christmas tree and you are honoring that Christmas tree and you're bowing down before that tree to put water in it and you are reaching for that tree to plug the lights in it, you're bowing down and thanking Santa Claus for the presence underneath that tree, you are foolish. 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 Jeremiah 17, 11. As the partridge sitteth on eggs, and hatches them not. So he that getteth riches not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. So when you gain a gain by defraud, by deceit, by lying in your end you are a fool you may get all the toys you may have all the goods in that stupid sticker he with the most toys in the end wins all right you got the most toys you accumulated a whole world of junk in, that you can't take with you. It gets you no honor to God in the eternal life. And you die in a deceitful way, deceiving others, and you gained up all that wealth. And then when you die, you become a fool. Congratulations. And again, we're looking at, you must be wise to lie. You must have knowledge how to cheat. You must have the wisdom to defraud somebody. And that yet in your end, it's the fall of the fool. It's the fall. It's not arriving. Lamentations 2.14. The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. And they have not discovered thy iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and cause of banishment. So foolishness is the prophecy of false prophets. They were fools not to address the sin issue of the people. 
That's today's modern church. There is no preaching of sin. There is no preaching of repentance. There is no repeaching, uh, preaching of pardon. God just loves everybody. God's just happy so with us. God's a hunky-dunky loving kind of God just so sweet and give him ten dollars he'll give you ten thousand all the prosperity that god will give you is a lie and comes out of foolish mouths a great place to follow a foolish mouth of a man is on the television or the radio and i didn't say all of them but it's a place to start it's a place to start foolishness is false prophets 88 the lord's going to come 98 the lord's going to come 2001 the lord's going to come oh when the moon does this it's going to happen oh when the earthquakes and the lord's coming soon now you are a fool you are a false prophet ezekiel 13 3. ezekiel 13 and who's more the fool the man that preaches the foolishness or the man that listens to the foolishness Man that studies the Bible is not going to fall and listen to that foolishness. I don't get involved in the, in the deceivers. I don't get involved in television. I don't watch TV preachers. I don't listen to radio preachers. I don't get involved in their books. And I don't want to listen to that garbage. I get enough from the news headlines. I get enough from people I talk to. I get enough from I'm witnessing to people about these people. I don't need to get involved because I may soak in their foolishness. Because we've already seen a wise man could fall into foolishness. God has given me wisdom. I am studying the scriptures and I am able to fall from my knowledge of God into foolishness if I'm not careful. You know, if you go swimming in the sewer, evidently you're going to come out stinking like the sewer so so you don't want to smell like a sewer stay out of the sewer it's wise ezekiel 13 3 thus saith the lord god woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing foolish foolish wicked false men of God proclaiming God said and God's like I didn't say nothing I had nothing to do with that man he's not of me he's not following me I don't know him by name he's a fool and they get all the people that follow him they get all the people that honor him get all the people that send him money get all the people that watch get all the people that attend and the Bible says he's foolish again who would follow a fool but a fool so the man that's in that pulpit or whatever it is, if he's a fool with a foolish message and a false prophet, then those that are in the congregation are fools for listening to the fool. And they definitely don't study their Bible. And the Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God and working that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Then you become not only foolish, but you are ashamed because you're listening to a fool. When the Bible has given us all the characteristics to see what a fool is, and we've been studying. 145 times we've done fool. The only thing we're missing, I'm sorry, is folly. I think 145 times we still got more to do. 145 and we have... Check me real quick. We got 189 fools. We're coming to the home stretch almost. And you need to go back and you need to listen to what did I say? Right now, this is the number 20th. This, we have 19 so far working on number 20 right now, lessons on the fool study. And you need to go through those fools so you don't get deceived by a fool. You need to go through those fools so you don't become a fool. And if you are a fool by these studies, you come out from being a fool. You can come out and you can also fall in. I'd rather come out than fall. Hosea 9, 7. Hosea 
Hosea 9 and 7. You know, and I'm not marking that commercial, but please, I'm not marking. But help me, I've fallen. If you were standing in the Lord and studying the Bible, there would be, as far as foolishness, no fall. When you came into your own wisdom, you came into your own understanding, you got into your own knowledge, that's what came caused you to fall. And when you're down and out and you reach out to God, you can get up and you can stand on God. And when you're walking and living with God and trying to do right, you still can reach out to God and get more wisdom, get more knowledge, get more understanding. You're able to grow, 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 grow. But the, if you're flat on the ground as a fool, there's only one way to help you, and that's to get up. But if you won't get up, and you can't get up, stay down. I advise you not to stay down. Hosea 9, 7. The days of visitation are come. Uh-oh, this is not the visitation you want. The days of recompense are come. Second Advent. Israel shall know it. Man, they just had seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation. The Antichrist has been, been torturing them. Antichrist has been trying to kill them. He's been hunting them down. You got the mark. You, it's just all kinds of judgments in the tribulation period. The signs, the seals, the bowls, the, the woes, the trumpets. Israel's going to know. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad. For the multitude of thy iniquity and the great hatred. Prophesying lies to the people when the day comes the people will know nothing of it and did not expect it from the foolish prophets. There's coming a day And I have a teaching about that, but I'm not going to go into that teaching right now, but I'm just going to say in general. There's coming the day, the blessed hope, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come. Okay? What we call the rapture. And for the illustration's sake is, I'm going to say he's going to come on, on a church day. And with all these prophets that Jesus is not coming and... You know, we don't preach the Jesus of the Bible. We preach the prosperity Jesus. We preach what would Jesus do. We got the loving Jesus. We got the Tootsie Roll Jesus. We got Jesus Kumbaya. We got Jesus all that. And one day the rapture is going to happen. And people by the droves are going to exit the church doors into their cars. And if the Lord comes during the church services, for his bride, they're going to be people are going to go to their restaurants, they're going to go home, they're going to do what they do at the church, not even realizing that they missed an event called the rapture. The next great event is the Lord calling his church home, the blessed hope for those that are saved, and those who have been under the false preaching of false prophets are not even going to know what happened. They're going to miss the Lord coming for his church because, oh, everybody, you know, just be happy. Just you, you're, you're such a good person. And if you let your light shine, nonsense. They're going to be saved individuals who are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And they're not going to get no crowns. They're not going to get inheritance. They're not going to get rewards because the man behind their pulpit didn't teach about those things. And they will be at a loss because they're listening to a fool who didn't teach them nothing. They didn't study the Bibles themselves to realize what is coming. Many of the Christians today don't believe or do not have any knowledge of the judgment seat of Christ. You know, it's not preached today in the pulpits. And one of the things I do preach is not only are we guilty as Christians, not including this lost man. Not only are we guilty, I did not physically murder anybody, but if I think about it, I'm a murderer. I may not jump in a bed with another woman to despise my wife, 
But if I think about it, I've committed adultery. And we need to realize that the judgment seat of Christ, not only my actions, did I steal the pencil, did I steal the cookie, but did I think about robbing that bank and being a, accused before God as a rock bank robber? Our thoughts are able to be counted for sin. How about that? When was the last time you heard your preacher? Be careful of your thoughts and put your thoughts under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When was the last time you heard that? Do you think God's going to let your thoughts go free? You think God's going to let your daydream go free? You think God's going to let your dreams go free? Oh, he was unconscious, so he didn't know. Oh, he's sitting at his desk. He's supposed to be doing work, but he's daydreaming. I'll just let that. No, you're not going to get a hallway pass. You're going to be judged for what you think. Haven't heard that message out of the pulpit. Haven't heard that pulpit. Zechariah 11.15. Zechariah 11.15. We're all guilty saved. Our standing is in the Lord Jesus Christ. But man, our state, we're in Florida, we're in California, we're in Mexico, we're in Wyoming, we're in Alaska, we're in Connecticut, we're in Texas, we're, man, we're just all over the place. We're doing good, we're not doing good, we're doing great, we're not doing so great. We're wise and yet we're foolish. I found myself to be a fool many times in this study. That's not the state to be in. And as we've seen today, being a fool is falling. It's getting worse. And we ought not to be like that. Zechariah 11, 15. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Quite possible that you have in your church, I don't know, you might have a foolish shepherd behind your behind your pulpit. You might have a foolish shepherd that sits at the pastor of your church or whatever you call your spiritual leader. It is capable and there is a way that foolish men are in pulpits. And foolish men can be saved or they can be lost. Foolish saved means you've gone away from God. You've stepped out of the way of holiness. Foolish and not being saved is you have not done what God's told you to do. And the Bible has said, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You may have a man behind your pulpit, if he's unsaved and, and he's a fool, he may even deny God with a Bible in his hand. It's kind of hard, but it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's the truth. Let me show you. Take your Bibles. The second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. I'll show you something here. You don't think it's your you don't think. Maybe not yours. They got the wrong pro now. But in pulpits, Second Corinthians eleven, verse fourteen. If you think every man in the pulpit is saved and of God you believe every man that preaches is of God you're a fool you're a fool look at this first uh, second Corinthians 11 13 will begin and for such are false apostles so like our study deceitful workers seem like our study transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That means they're not, but they're making themselves. And no marvel, don't marvel at this, for Satan himself, uh-oh, 
is transformed into an angel of light. I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. You better be careful. It may be Satan. Oh, I lay there in the gurney and I died and I saw this great light. You may be careful because it may have been Satan. Or drugs. Now watch this, verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his. Now where does the his go back to? Verse 14, Satan. So, therefore, it is no great thing if Satan or his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, who then shall be according to their deeds. Not everybody in a pulpit is of God. There may be, the Bible says that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, there are in pulpits, there is the possibility that that man, or especially that woman, behind that pulpit, behind that microphone, behind that camera, on the YouTube, or however on the internet, that person may be of Satan. And they are a fool. And you are more foolish to listen to him. How do I know? Study to show thyself approved unto God and work that me is not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Rightly divine. Is this man saying what he's saying according to the scriptures, according to be approved by God in Jesus Christ? Or <coughs> excuse me, is he an ambassador of Satan? Is he of God or is he transformed? That's what this whole study about fool is. I don't want you to be foolish. I don't want to be foolish. And yet I found myself to be foolish many times. But there are fools out there. And there are fools out there that have ministry. And there are people who were wise and have fallen to foolish. And there are people who were foolish and have risen to being wise. I was foolish one time. I believe a church. I believe a priest. I believe whatever that nonsense of the Catholic organization. And then I got out of that. I mean, I got asked that time, you know, you want to go to church with Grandpa? No. Then I got the foolishness to thinking I could do whatever I wanted to do. No consequences. And then I, I was sat down with the Bible a Saturday afternoon and said, you know, this is what the Bible says. This is where you're going to go. You're going to a place called hell unless you put your faith upon Jesus Christ. And I realized I'm going to hell. I became wise by the testimony, by the gospel, by the merits of Jesus Christ and came to God and said, God, I need a pardon because I'm guilty. I became wise. Then I went out the next day and started witnessing and then I started sinning. I became a fool. I confessed my sins and got right with God and got wise. And then I went and did something stupid. I became a fool. I said, Lord God, help me. I'm falling. And he got me up and I got wise. I got the scriptures. And if I fail, if I became a fool, it's not the Bible's fault, it's my fault. And if you're following an ambassador of Satan, it is your fault, because I just told you that there are ambassadors of Satan out there. And they may not even use pulpits. Whatever they do. So, and we're going to stop right there because... We're done with the Old Testament. Lord willing, next time we'll pick up with number 148. 148 full of the Bible is Matthew. We will get into the Gospels next week, Lord willing. Next time. So I think end of the Old Testament, 147 times we have seen 20 lessons we have done so far now. You need to go back and review them all. And you can give them out, you can record them, you can upload, whatever you do for yourself, for your ears, for your friends, for the people you know, for the saved, for the lost, get it out free. 
Use it for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. And if you were to change it, if you were to edit, you were to, to deceive what these any of my teachers, that's between you and God, not me. But I give you free, go and get the word out. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Help Christians to grow. Help the lost to grow in God and Jesus Christ.